Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a pretty uh, interesting show here for you guys today. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel. Now, um, we've been following this John Morant story uh, pretty closely. And uh, yesterday, we got some exclusive information um, from the NBA and from John Morant himself. Uh, yesterday, he had a sit down on ESPN with Jalen Rose uh, to basically discuss basically everything that's transpired over the last two or three weeks or so. And he gave his opinion on that. And um, he said what was basically, uh, what is it, going through his mind. We also heard uh, that the um, the NBA announced that he will be suspended for a total of eight games, uh, six of which he's already um, served, right? So he has two more games that he's going to miss, and I think he's then eligible to return by March uh, 20th, right? Now, while all of the, the news information was coming out surrounding John Morant, a lot of us were really perplexed as to what was the actual cause of these things happening. Like, what was... What was, um, you know, causing John Morant to find himself in these type of situations where you could ultimately jeopardize your dollars and your represent and your reputation even more uh, importantly? And uh, this morning, while doing some research, I came across an audio here. Um, I believe it was from FadeAwayWorld.net, and it was featuring an interview that Patrick Beverly did when he sat down to talk to Barstool Sports. And during this interview, it's a pretty lengthy interview. They asked him a range of things to comment on a range of things. But then they got to the point where they wanted to get a sense of what Patrick Beverly felt was causing John Moran to do what he was doing. And he gave a pretty, pretty interesting um, answer to what he feels was compelling John Moran to behave the, the way that he was behaving. So what we want to do is we want to play exactly what Patrick Beverly had to say here. And then we're going to come back and really unpack this thing. Take a listen to that there. Let me ask you another question that you're not going to answer. Okay. <laughs> One of the things that we kept hearing, and, and Shannon Sharp, and it was a big one with like Skip, and everyone's like, he's trying to pretend to be something he's not. He's trying no. to be pretend to be like a gangster, like a thug, the guns. And, and then you'd hear people like, he grew up in a good family, good neighborhood. He's just not. And I saw, I think it was Shannon or they were talking like, maybe he is. Maybe this is who he is. What's your take on him? Like, is he pretending? Does he want that? Or is he, he may be that. Like, if you keep doing it. I don't, I think music is, has a lot to do with this now. You know, with this, especially with this culture, everybody holding a gun in the video is okay. You know, bling on your, on your teeth, that's okay. Pants half down your ass, that's okay. So like. That's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? It's just a product of what we listen to, you know what I'm saying? So, like, with the culture now is shoot them up, bang, 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 shoot them up, bend you over. I got this amount of money. I'm on private jets, just that, that, that. I mean, that's what the, you know, younger generation is. I Sadly to say, it shouldn't be based on our music, but it is mostly based on what we listen to, and that's how it is. Eminem came out, and Eminem was rapping and got palms and sweaty knees, weak arms are heavy, like, he had on a hoodie. Everybody back then had on hoodies and big jeans. You know what I'm saying? Like if Eminem would have came out like, yeah, I carry pipes, I carry straps, I got 12 guns. Every white kid in America would have a gun on him back then. All right, last question. Good rant on the state of uh, society and music. Okay. How come you can't call somebody stupid, but you can call all the people in the Chicago office fat? Not fat. I didn't say that. What did I you said, say? I said husky and my second... A noun I used was sturdy. <laughs> I heard fat. Sturdy might be no, even meaner than fat. never hear that word out of my mouth. <laughs> Husky. Sturdy. You'll never call anybody fat? No. I'm a good human, like by nature. That doesn't mean if you're fat, you're fat. Eddie's yeah, fat. He I mean, knows. Not, not the, my, maybe you just a different word. I like your style. Hey, 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 Rob, listen. You know I like your style. Do you call him I Rob? Like no, 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 that's what I first called you. Oh, that's one. One for Pat, zero for you. That's what I first called you when we first did our oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Noted. Not locked in. Noted. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> Got up one, Pat Bev. Say less. 
<laughs> you got hey, listen, I have a show to do, man. You guys take it easy, okay? All right, bye. All right. So you heard what Patrick Beverly had to say. He believes that John Morant is being influenced by music and hip hop uh, culture. And this is something that um, I thought was a pretty interesting show uh, and topic to really unpack here. So let's 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 get into it. Um, I've been listening to hip hop since I was a kid. OK, been a fan of it. My favorite, uh, I think the greatest rapper of all time is Biggie Smalls. Listen to all of his albums and so many others. Right. So many others. And we all know the type of things that are discussed in hip hop. If you listen to hip hop, you have some conscious, some conscious rappers uh, like, you know, Kendrick Lamar and others. But generally, we know what it's about. It's about, um, you know, describing the realities that a lot of these artists grew up in. Um, a lot of it is about bragging. A lot of it is about flaunting. A lot of it is about saying how much better my life is uh, than yours. And it's, just, it's an art form. It's in a form and it's a form of expression. However, um, as I got older, what I was able to do was distinguish between the fact that this is music and that's all it is. I'm not going to apply what I'm hearing in this in this in, in this music to my life. I'm not going to behave based on the, the things that these artists are saying in their music and then adopt those uh, modes of operation in the way I live my life. It's just entertainment. I can listen to a song with somebody, you know, uh, I can listen to a song like uh, um, off the top of my head, like 400 bars from the game. Right. You know, going at 50 cent and blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the song, I'll be like, OK, those he has some pretty hot lines. And OK, now I'm going to go on to my go on and live my life. I'm not going to come out and start acting like, OK, now I'm the game. I'm from wherever place and start acting like that. No. Um, unfortunately, however, some people cannot distinguish between the two. Uh, some people will listen to a song, it'll get them hype, and then all of a sudden, they'll feel like they have to start acting like what they just heard in that song. Whether you believe it or not, it's true, right? Whether you believe it or not, uh, it's true. Some people want to act like, you know, a lot of the artists that they listen to, for whatever reason, they can't understand that, okay, this is a song, it has a beginning and an ending, and that's what it is. That's that person's life. That's the story that person is painting. And it's not my life. And I do not need to act like that person. Um, but some people cannot distinguish between the two. Um, some people uh, simply cannot. And I think that that is what um, Patrick Beverly was alluding to. Right. Where, you know, John Moran is basically trying to, you know, um, present himself as a rapper. Right. With the tats, the grill and, you know, the mannerisms and all of that. That's how some rappers behave. That is not how athletes behave. Athlete. Why? Because athletes have a totally different lifestyle. Number one. Number two, they have a totally different image to uphold. A rapper has to up uphold a particular image because of what they talk about. Right. If you talk about, you know, how rich you are, you got all this money, you're going to have to show it. Whether it's by the jewelry you're wearing or the cars that you're driving, you got to you got to uphold that image that you're creating. But athletes, you don't have to uphold anything except the standard that that you put out there in terms of your in terms of your of your performance and whatever craft you find yourself doing. That's it. But some people, again, cannot distinguish between the two. And therein lies the problem. And I think that's what Patrick Beverly is talking. It's the same thing with movies, right? Some people, uh, I told you guys not too long ago, I watched, um, I had seen the Godfather um, series when I was younger, but I watched it as an, as an adult and I gained a totally different understanding as an adult. But just because I just finished watching the Godfather does not mean I need to start acting like these guys in the movie because it's not my life. And I don't want to reenact. It's a fantastic movie. And I understand that it's a movie. However, the challenge is some people cannot distinguish between that line. They can't just watch something or listen to something and leave it at that. They take it a step further and now try to reenact what they saw or what they heard. 
And therein lies the problem because those people live in those particular lives. Those lives come with a whole bunch of issues or uh, it entails a whole bunch. And the minute you try to, you know, assimilate into that, you're opening up a whole new door of problems for yourself.